confidence intervals. One of the wonders of the world. Okay, we have um, our population here, and let's run down some confidence intervals, the dance of the confidence intervals. 5% are red. Well, one of the key inferential bits of um, interpretation we need to do with any data is to show, uh, draw some pictures of our confidence intervals based on our data and then draw conclusions. We need to interpret the confidence intervals. So I want to talk about a few different ways we might think about confidence intervals. And the first one is that our interval comes from an infinite series in a dance and ours might be red. There's a chance it might be red, but most likely we've captured the thing we're trying to estimate. So let's consider we've done our uh, experiment on uh, getting ratings of maybe headache in some certain situation, and our sample data has come in, and we've calculated from that a confidence interval. And we get um, a mean here of 25, about a quarter of the way along the VAS scale, and the 95% confidence interval runs from 11 to 39. So it's sort of 25 plus or minus 14. How do we think about this confidence interval? There are several different ways. The first way is that it's one from the dance. So we have this confidence interval, and in principle, there's a uh, population out there, and it's the mean of this population we're trying to estimate. All the information we've got is what we've calculated from our data, which is this confidence interval. So where's this population mean? Well, our confidence interval comes from a dance. And how frenetic is this dance? How wide is the jumping around of successive means in this dance? Well, the extent of the confidence interval gives us some idea of how um, extreme, how wide this dance is. So, the first interpretation is ours is one from the dance, and it might be red. In our lifetime, 5% of the confidence intervals we look at will be red. And this one might be, probably won't, but it just might be. We can never tell. Unfortunately, in real life, confidence intervals don't come coloured. Interpretation two. Well, focus on our interval, which runs from 11 to 39. We can be 95% confident that our interval includes the true value. If it misses, it probably only misses by a small amount, but most likely the true value is in our interval. Values in the interval, anything from 11 to 39, are quite plausible, quite reasonable guesses for the true value. Values outside are relatively implausible, although ones close to the interval are not impossible. So that's our second interpretation. Third interpretation, even more beautiful than the, this picture of a confidence interval, is the cat's eye. A cat's eye confidence interval, which pictures the relative likelihood or relative plausibility of where the true value lies, where the population mean lies. So most likely it's in the sort of central region in the confidence interval, and that likelihood tails off towards each end, and there's still a little bit of black beyond the limits, the lower limit and the upper limit of the confidence interval, so there's still a chance that the true value might lie out there. But this confidence interval, this cat's eye picture, indicates that round about the middle is our best bet. Now the fourth interpretation, this is the first time I've mentioned uh, null hypothesis significance testing, which is a whole alternative approach to inference. And in my view, and the view of many, not nearly as informative as confidence intervals, as estimation. And progressively, I believe, we should be moving away from p-values and NHST and using confidence intervals. But you can map between them. Think of this confidence interval, I said, well, values inside the interval are plausible for the true population mean. Suppose you're interested in some value outside, say that was zero or 50, some special value that your theory postulated might be the true value. 
if it lies outside the confidence interval, it's relatively implausible, relatively bad bet, unlikely. And that translates into reject at the, uh, say it's not statistically significant, reject it at the P.05 level. Now P, the probability, the P value, a very tricky concept. I can define it. P is the probability that if the null hypothesis is true, we would get our observed result or more extreme. That didn't help at all, did it? Well, you're in good, uh, good company because there's evidence that really lots and lots of people, including researchers, including some people who teach statistics, who don't really understand the p-value either. That's not really their fault so much as the problem that statistical significance testing and p-values is inherently tricky, backward logic, rather perverse. And I think rather than explain it 17 times in great detail, I'd prefer to say, yes, the world uses them, yes, there are lots in the literature, but the world will be a better place when we switch and use estimation. The trouble with just saying, oh, it's significant or not, you throw away a lot of the information. The confidence interval gives you full information from your data about where the true value lies. So the confidence interval. Hug a confidence interval today, or two if you prefer. And you can download ESCII, as I keep saying, from this website. You can play around with long and short confidence intervals. Do you prefer a long or a short confidence interval? It's the new greeting. Hey, good morning. Oh, I like that confidence interval you got there. So short. Absolutely right. May all your confidence intervals be short. <laughs>